Greetings, I'm Vlad Vasali, cardiologist and co-director of the Cardiovascular Lab Medicine at Mayo Clinic. I have no financial disclosures. Today I'm going to talk about ceramides and atherosclerotic risk assessment. Specifically, I'm going to define ceramides, talk about when and who should be tested for ceramides, and I'm going to also share with you some of the findings regarding ceramides in primary prevention at Mayo Clinic. Cardiovascular disease continues to increase despite advances in therapies and novel approaches, as you can appreciate here depicted in light blue. The ASCVD risk calculator is the only calculator endorsed by American guidelines for assessment of atherosclerosis. However, this calculator has important limitations. There are limitations related to sex, different ethnic groups, socioeconomic groups, and diabetes. Moreover, in pre-hoc analysis, some experts consider the uh, ASCVD risk calculator as a simple flip of a coin, therefore underlying the importance for more robust biomarkers of cardiovascular risk. Patients at intermediate risk or patients that present with risk enhancers need to be further risk stratified. And we do that by using several measures of which the most common one is the coronary calcium scoring. The most widespread method is the Agatson method. However, this method is not without limitations. There are limitations regarding reproducibility. Uh, certain calcium densities in certain populations and we know that once we start the patient on statins, we expectedly increase in calcium density. Again, underlying the need for more robust biomarkers of cardiovascular risk. The plaque is a very complex and dynamic structure initiated by lipids and propagated by inflammation and thrombosis. When we think of biomarkers of atherosclerotic risk, we think about biomarkers that pertain to the lipid pathway, such as the reputed LDLC, biomarkers that pertain to the inflammation pathway, such as high sensitivity CRP, or biomarkers that belong to the thrombosis pathway. Ceramides are central biomarkers that interdigitate all three pathways the lipid pathway, inflammation pathway, and thrombosis pathway. Therefore, in my view, ceramides are a very comprehensive biomarker for assessment of atherosclerotic risk. What are ceramides? They're phospholipids located in all cell membranes, but they're not simple inert molecules. They're signaling molecules that increase with caloric excess, hyperlipidemia, inflammation, or ischemia. The ceramide pathway is a very complex pathway. Suffice to say that certain ceramide species, such as 16O, 18O, and 241, have been associated with negative atherosclerotic events. I am talking about myocardial infarction, stroke, and even death. These studies have been performed in cohorts of patients with known coronary artery disease for secondary prevention. We at Mayo Clinic implemented in clinical practice the ceramide score several years ago. This consists in four ceramides, of which three are of biological interest, and the fourth is used for normalization. For clinical validation, we use the cohort of patients with established coronary artery disease by elective coronary angiogram. We determined four categories of risk defined by the ceramide score, such that a ceramide score of zero to two confers low cardiovascular risk, while a ceramide score of 10 to 12 confers very high cardiovascular risk. How about ceramides in primary prevention? Well, there are not that many studies that looked at ceramides in primary prevention. The majority of these studies have been performed in Northern European populations such as this study presented here, the FINRIS study. In this trial, cardiovascular death was associated with elevated ceramides in a cohort of patients without known coronary artery disease at baseline. Moreover, 
when they looked at the ceramide score and compared that to an established biomarker of cardiovascular risk, high sensitivity CRP, there was a clear additive effect of the ceramide score to high sensitivity CRP. One important aspect and characteristic of the ceramide and ceramide score is the fact that they are modifiable biomarkers. Now, this has direct clinical implications for us providers. Ceramides are lowered with the Mediterranean diet, with aerobic exercise training, or with pharmacologic interventions, such as statins, or more recently with PCSK9 inhibitors, all measures that we extensively use in preventive cardiology. I also wanted to bring our Mayo Clinic experience regarding ceramide score in primary prevention here. We looked at the PAVID cohort, which is a well-characterized community population followed longitudinally for approximately 16 years. And these are subjects without known coronary artery disease at the time of enrollment. We looked at approximately 1,100 individuals who had a risk profile very similar to the risk profile of a white U.S. population. The Kaplan-Meier curve shows a clear association of the ceramide score with atherosclerotic events, stroke, and MI, with hazard ratio of 2.63 for the fourth quartile and 1.63 for the second quartile. And there was a dose-response curve in the sense that the higher the ceramide score, the higher the probability of atherosclerotic events down the line. We also wanted to see how good of a test was ceramide score. And after adjustment for conventional risk factors for coronary artery disease, we obtained a C-statistic of 0.67. And I know that this is not very impressive, but if you think that coronary artery disease is such a multifactorial condition, then the C statistic becomes significant. Moreover, when you compare this C statistic with the C statistic for the ASCVD risk calculator, which is less than 0.5, clearly the ceramide score has more discriminatory value than the ASCVD risk uh, calculator for atherosclerotic events. In summary, the ceramide score is a robust biomarker of atherosclerotic risk used for primary and secondary prevention, which I encourage you to use in your clinical practice. It is a reproducible test. It is useful to assess response to intervention or interventions. And it motivates patients to continue the intervention because we show the ceramide score before and after the intervention, and we see how that score decreases in parallel with the cardiovascular risk. There is no radiation involved. It's a very cost-effective test. Results are easy to interpret by us providers. They're simple numbers that place the patient in a stratum of cardiovascular risk. And if your patient had financial concerns, you can reassure them that ceramides have been recently approved for reimbursement by insurance companies. With this, I thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward for your comments and questions via Twitter or email. Thank you.